Hello, I'm Boaz Pachamil. I'm going to talk about distributed computing with the cloud. This is joint work with Professor Yuda Fek and uh, our student Gal Giladi from Tel Aviv University. Recently, the cloud is everywhere, as everyone has recently bought a, pro, uh, a computer nodes. Uh, in the last few years, the number of users of Google Drive uh, exceeded 1 billion. The amount of data stored in Dropbox exceeded three exabytes, and the number of daily users of OneDrive of Microsoft is more than 100 million. And how about cloud research? Well, cloud research is mostly concerned with designing clouds. This means finding uh, better cloud architectures, finding ways to manage clouds, finding, finding protocols to, to run in the cloud and maintaining uh, cloud security and many other things like that. In this talk, we will ask a different question. Our question here is, how can distributed systems use the cloud? Okay. Uh, for this purpose, uh, let us uh, see what a cloud is. In our view, a distributed system is just a network of processors, and all processors are connected to a single cloud. So the cloud is some kind of omnipresent. Uh, we abstract this by assuming in our model that the cloud is just a single node to which all other nodes are connected. Okay. That node is just a storage node, so data could be put in the cloud uh, node and could be retrieved from the cloud node, but otherwise the cloud node does no computation. Okay. So uh, in some sense, the cloud serves as a kind of shared memory. Uh, so in the paper, we give a model we call computing with the cloud, CWC. And the main guidelines are the following. We have a synchronous networks, namely the execution proceed in lockstep rounds where all processes uh, advance in, uh, in synchrony. For the nodes, we have the, uh, the traditional type of nodes. So each node is actually a computer. But we also have this new type of nodes called cloud nodes. A cloud node is just a shared storage. So let me be clear, no computation is done in the cloud nodes, uh, so we are referring only to cloud storage, not computing clouds. Okay. Regarding links, we assume that every link has a prescribed speed, meaning how many bits can the link carry in a round to its other end. Uh, since in our model cloud nodes are passive, there are no links connecting to cloud nodes. Uh, this is not the first model in distributed computing, obviously. Uh, we list quite a few here in this slide. Uh, some models here combine message passing with shared memory. Uh, for our case, the most relevant ones are the congest model, which was uh, introduced in the 90s. Uh, uh, it, it, this is a message passing model with a prescribed, uh, with uh, bounded bandwidth links. And much more recently, less than two years ago, the hybrid model was uh, proposed. The hybrid model, we have a, a network with unbounded bandwidth. And also there's a click connecting all, the, all nodes among themselves, but the use of the click links is limited. Uh, we will mention something about that later on. Uh, to convince you that the CWC model is worth looking at, let me give you an example. The example would be wheel topology. This is a parametric example with a single parameter n. Okay. So we have n processors, which you can see here, and a single uh, cloud node in the wheel topology. 
the processors are connected in a ring topology. So they are all arranged in a cycle and they are connected like a ring. And the bandwidth of any link connecting two processors on the ring is n, that same parameter n. Okay. Beside the ring links, there are also links connecting each processor with the cloud node. The bandwidth of these links is much smaller. It's the square root of n. Okay. Again, the same n. So this concludes the description of the hardware. Now, regarding the problem, we assume that each node holds initially a vector of n bits. Okay, node i holds a vector si. And the requirement is to compute the sum of all these vectors. So by the end of the computation, some node needs to hold or output the vector, which is the sum of all the si's. Okay, so this is the game we play. And now let's look at a few ways to solve this problem. We start with a, a naive solution, which does not use the cloud. It all uses only the ring. Okay, no cloud, only the ring. Uh, we can obviously compute the sum of the vectors over the ring, but the problem is that it takes a long time. Okay, the, the ring has n nodes. So even if we have, so regardless of the bandwidth of the ring links, um, the time to cross the link for the ring from one side to the other is omega of n rounds. It's just, just the diameter of the ring. Okay, So there's no way to compute the sum of all vectors uh, without using the cloud in less than omega of n rounds. Okay, so this is one thing to remember. The other thing to look at is what happens if we use only the cloud and forget about the local network, the ring, okay? So without the ring, all the problem of diameter goes away, but now we have a problem of bandwidth. Recall that the size of each vector is n bits, and the size of the links connecting no processors to the cloud is square root of n. It follows that the time to upload a single vector to the cloud is omega of square root of n rounds. So there's no way to solve the vector addition problem in omega in less than uh, omega of root n rounds. Okay, that's the other solution. But what happens if we use both the ring links and the cloud links? Well, in this case, things look much better. We can show that the time to upload a single n-bit vector from a node to the cloud is theta of the fourth root of n. Okay, if we do it, if a node tries to do it alone, it's a square root of n, but with help from friends, it can be done in the fourth root of n. And actually, this is also a lower bound up to a constant. Uh, so, using this uh, uh, technique of uploading a vector in the fourth root of n times, we can. Uh, compute the sum of all vectors in time which is soft theta of the fourth root of n, namely n, n to the one quarter times some polynomial. How do we do that? The idea is actually quite simple. We partition the ring into intervals, each containing n to the one quarter uh, processes. Okay. Once we did we do that within each interval we can compute the sum of vectors in time, which is n to the one quarter. Once we have this uh, vector for each interval, each interval of node can collectively upload that partial sum uh, to the cloud in time, which is again n to the one quarter. This is because we the total number of bits to upload is n. And the total bandwidth available to the uh, to the n to the one quarter processors in the interval is n to the three quarters. So in n, uh, so in additional n to the one quarter uh, rounds, we can upload the uh, partial results to.
to the uh, cloud, and then we can recurse and compute the uh, total sum uh, with uh, logarithmic uh, additional logarithmic factor. Okay, so this shows that using both the cloud links and the local links can improve the uh, performance considerably uh, when compared to using only the cloud links or only the local links. Uh, okay, so now that I uh, hopefully convinced you that the CWC model is useful, let's recap what are the main ingredients of the CWC model. So uh, essentially the model is just congest with a twist, and the twist being the cloud nodes. What distinguishes cloud nodes from other nodes is that these nodes do not carry out uh, computation. They only support read and write requests that arrive from other, from uh, non-cloud nodes. And the other distinguishing feature of cloud nodes is that typically they are connected to all or most of the processes. Okay. So this is uh, the main twist in the CWC model. Another important property of a CWC model is that we have a, a, a given bandwidth for each link. Well, in the congest model, we also had that, but in, co in the congest model, the bandwidth was typically log n bits per round. Well, this makes sense. We argue that in, in uh, now that actually this number is outdated because of uh, to, because today bandwidth is much more uh, plentiful, and uh, we usually think about the CWC model with bandwidths of link with links of bandwidth n to the epsilon for some positive constant epsilon. Another another thing that we usually assume about link bandwidth is that the link connecting processors to processors are usually have a usually much higher bandwidth than links connecting processors to the cloud okay so this is a, you know just a, some intuition about the cwc model more details can be found in the paper in the paper we also define the problems we address in the CWC model. And here is a list. Uh, first are the basic problems of uploading and downloading a file. In this context, uploading is cloud write. A node has a file it wishes to write onto the cloud. And downloading is cloud read. A node has a file on the cloud it wishes to download. Uh, we also consider cloudcast, which means that all nodes wish to learn the contents of uh, some file in the cloud. Uh, so this is uh, somewhat similar to broadcast in, in uh, the congest model. In the congest model, there's also the powerful uh, construct of convergecast, and here we have cloud combined. So cloud combine uh, is the following task. Each node, each processing node, holds an input value. And the requirement is to write in the cloud a value that is the combined value of all inputs. Well, we've seen an example with vector addition, where the combined value is just the vector sum of all inputs. You can think also about matrix multiplication or actually about any as binary associative operator. Okay, so in this case, we have inputs uh, uh, distributed over the nodes, and we wish to find the result of applying the operator to all inputs in order. Okay, uh, so these are the problems uh, we consider in the paper, and we give results. Well, for the first uh, uh, basic problems of uploading and downloading files, or cloud read and cloud write, we give optimal implementation based on dynamic flow techniques. Okay, this is uh, quite a simple adaptation. Our main results concern combining. We give algorithms for general combining with general uh, associative binary operator and general topology, but not for general bandwidths. We uh, give the solution for the model of fat links 
namely we assume that uh, uh, links connecting processes to processes have practically unbounded bandwidth okay but in this case we find uh, we give a, a, an algorithm which is nearly optimal on the other hand we look at the case of a wheel model and we give tight analysis of its complexity for combining now under general uh, bandwidth assignment for, for whatever bandwidth the links have we know exactly how to uh, do the combining in an optimal way up to a constant uh, so one result gives us combining in general topologies but restricted bandwidths and the other result gives our uh, gives uh, optimal uh, combining for a certain topology but with arbitrary bandwidth Finally, we give in the paper also uh, a few applications, namely federated learning and file deduplications. Let me expand on that now. So regarding federated learning, uh, the, let me explain what is the basic setup. Uh, we have users where each user holds some private data. The private data could be private uh, uh, photographs, private uh, recordings and so on. The users want to collaborate in training some machine learning uh, uh, apparatus. Okay. Uh, to do that, uh, what uh, the, the, the way machine learning works is that we have a vector of parameters. Uh, the vector using the vector, the vector of parameters is compared against the data. Uh, some gradient is computed from the from the, the, this comparison, and the, using the gradient, the vector of parameters is updated, and the new iteration starts. Okay, so this is uh, what happens usually in in uh, learning. The twist in federated learning is that the the, the data is distributed, and we would like to maintain some privacy. Of that data because users don't like to share their private photographs say with everyone so in federated learning what they usually do is that each user computes its own uh, its gradient with respect to its own data that uh, vector is sent over to a central server the central server combines all the gradients it uh, and distribute, uh, distributes the combined gradient to everybody to start a new iteration. What we propose is just to use secret sharing so that uh, we can do uh, addition of the vectors without violating the privacy of the users and use our uh, vector addition algorithm essentially uh, and this way we get much improved performance because we utilize not only the cloud links but also the local links and uh, we also don't need the central server to do any computation for us we can use only a storage uh, cloud server which as you know comes nowadays for free uh, up to some limit okay so that's it about uh, federated learning Regarding file duplication, this is a common problem in, in uh, file systems where you want to uh, identify copies or superfluous copies of uh, files which are abundant. Okay. So this is very easy to do. Uh, so the, the main task here is uh, given a set of files, distributed set of files, fi uh, find, uh, tell for each file, whether it is a primary copy or a secondary copy, a replica. Okay, Use, if you have that, you can actually uh, delete the replicas or do whatever thing, uh, you, or maybe just uh, keep a pointer or whatever. Okay, uh, this is a trivial task for our uh, framework because all we have to do is essentially implement union, which is a binary associative operator we have to augment it a little bit so that we we, we uh, record of uh, which of se of several copies we retain when we do the union 
Okay. So that's about further duplication. Again, uh, more details in, in the paper. So let me conclude. Uh, in the paper, we presented the new model of CWC, which is a combination of message passing with some shared memory or storage nodes. We presented algorithms for some basic tasks. And uh, we also presented some applications, namely federated learning and uh, the dedupe operation. Since this is a new model, we have plenty of open problems. For example, we still don't know how to do combining in general topologies with general bandwidth. Uh, another example is uh, how to make a CWC system uh, fault tolerant. Okay, this is wide open. Uh, it is also interesting to see what to do when we have multiple clouds, uh, say when we want to retain some privacy. Okay, there are many more questions. I really encourage you all to look at them and to work on them because I think this is a viable model. And until then, let me leave you with this cartoon. Thank you and bye-bye.